empty chairs, empty tables, empty kitchens, empty classrooms. This week, the fear of catching coronavirus was joined by another emotion, a great sadness, a terrible sense of loss. I wish I could say something that could take that pain away. Restaurants shut, businesses closed down. Yes, I feel that there was a big emptiness. It was probably one of the darkest days of my life. Millions of jobs lost, students sent home to learn remotely. I think everyone was a little bit anxious at first. Thanks, Clark. A little anxious about the whole situation. Suddenly, everything was silent. The real danger at home is loneliness. It's a risk because anxiety, as you know, has been growing. Chef and restaurateur Nino Zucali is lucky if he gets four hours sleep a night. The rest of the time is spent trying to make sense of this unprecedented new world where he literally can't open his two Sydney restaurants, Pendolino and La Rosa. Joe, how you going, mate? Yeah, it's bad, bad. Most businesses can sort of shelter themselves for a while or can, can, can deal with a catastrophic event like this for a while, but how long is it going to go on for, you know? So nothing could have prepared you for this? I think most people would be on belief. You know, it's lethal. Like, it's really, really lethal. I'm really, really regretful and really sorry that it's actually happened this way. And like thousands of other small business employers, it's been hit after hit for Nino. But the worst of it was when he had to call a meeting and let go of 80 staff members. All the restaurants in Australia are closing. What's it been like for you to sit down with your staff and, and give them such bleak news? Well, it's just really, it's really terrible. It'll be a matter of time before. But she loses her job too. You know, it's an awful, awful scenario. It's, um, nobody's happy about it. It's sort of, I feel like I'm throwing them off a cliff, uh, you know, but at the same time, I'm free falling off a cliff myself. And we're just trying to find places for our, for our guys at the moment. Everyone's been stood down. Nino predicts if this goes on for six months, he'll plunge into devastating debt. The only thing that keeps him going now are the moving messages from his devoted customers. We've had an, an enormous amount of heart, heartfelt support for us um, from, from some very, very long-term clients. Has it been heartening to receive that support from the public? Yeah, I can't read some of the emails because... Um... It's just too hard. Sorry. No, don't be sorry. Yeah. You've poured everything into this. This is... I mean, <laughs> this is your baby. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And there's obviously a lot of people out there who appreciate you and what you do. There is a lot of support for us and the things that people have said have just been really amazing, so... What does it look like when you're confronted with this bleak new reality? Oh, it's just a black, black feeling, you know? It's, it's a really black feeling. It's, you, it's very, very low. Huge pressures. So many people are just finding it heartbreaking to have to give very tough messages to people who have worked alongside them in businesses large and small for years and years. It was on my mind 24-7, just wearing me out. As chair of mental health awareness organisation Beyond Blue... I will not be lectured about sexism and misogyny by this man. Our former Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, is reaching out to Nino and everyone else going through incredibly tough times. Don't blame yourself would be a really principal message. People would feel that burden on their shoulders, but, you know, at the end of the day, the individual business owner did not cause this pandemic. Because one minute life was normal and the very next everything had changed. 
Yeah, it's the suddenness, isn't it, uh, is part of what I think is snowballing people's uh, sense of insecurity. And when so much has changed so quickly, it's understandable that people are anxious about and what's going to happen next and what's going to happen next. Um, that's the world we're living in. Please welcome former Prime Minister Julia Gillard. Julia Gillard has been in self-isolation after returning from overseas a week ago where she came into contact with the Canadian Prime Minister's wife, who later tested positive for COVID-19. Back here in Australia, she knows there are millions hurting because Beyond Blue's support service is getting swamped. We've actually seen levels already that are greater than what we experienced during the bushfires. It's just telling you a fair bit about how anxious people are. If you're at home and you're kind of climbing the walls, remember staying at home is about saving people's lives. And for most people in the community, you don't get to say every day that I'm doing something to save someone's life. Is there a risk that we are going to turn inwards to find ourselves in a dark place, you know, within four walls? I am really worried about that. You can get into self-talk where you're sort of catastrophizing. You're imagining the worst, worst future. So you're saying to yourself something like, what if family members died? What if all of my family died? What if I died? You know, um, if that is happening, then it's very important to kind of situate yourself back in the present. Uh, people would call that mindfulness and then try and think about the positive things the future could offer. But if you do find you're sort of stuck in a rut, it's getting dark, you're living with a lot of anxiety, reach out for help. I'm concerned about the staff getting worn out. Um, staff at the moment are working jolly hard. They're, they're emotionally tired. These vacant classrooms at Presbyterian Ladies College, Sydney, define today's reality. Before the pandemic hit, a school with no students and only a principal in it wouldn't have made any sense. I was talking to a teacher last Friday when, we, when we'd already decided to go online and, you know, we were heading out to the new world of online learning and she was almost grieving at that point. But Principal Dr Paul Burgess believes, despite the grief, there's still hope for his teachers and 1,400 students. We're really encouraging the teachers to do funny things, to make it quirky, to make it fun, so that when you're at home, you feel connected. We've got to look after student wellbeing before we look after anything else. What's it like for you when you walk around the corridors, the grounds, the classrooms, and they're empty? It's eerie. We, we miss them. We miss them very dearly. No, you don't see them as much. I mean, No, no, that's been but we see them on the screen. There they are. They're TV stars now, so <laughs> they're OK. Has everybody listened to my video? The virtual classroom right. now looks like this. In their own homes, students connect with their teachers online. One after the other, they join the chat, ready to learn in a thoroughly modern way. It's something Angie Raphael is actually enjoying. This is quite an unconventional classroom though, isn't it? Oh yes, yeah. Home is very different to what it would be in class, but you know, different isn't always bad. Could you ever have imagined that you'd end up here, learning from a computer? Where I don't think anyone could have really guessed that this would be happening a few weeks ago. I think it was shocking because it wasn't something that we were used to and it was something that was so new. Already, it seems the entire Raphael household is adapting. Dad Tony is working from home to supervise his three children, while Mum Lydia is on the front line. As a respiratory specialist, her expertise is in demand more than ever. And I guess you're one of the reasons the government wants schools to remain open. You're on the front line, you're a healthcare worker. Look, it's a double-edged double sword um, because um, if you keep the schools open, then um, the kids' education will continue, but there's a chance of infection that they might bring home. The same, there's a chance of infection that I might bring home, and then that goes to the school. So at least now I'm comforted that they're in good hands and that the, they're continuing to learn and to grow. But there's a toll on everyone, even Principal Dr Burgess. It must be a challenge for you, for, for your colleagues, mm. when yeah. you become educators so that you can nurture yeah. our future generations and help them become the leaders of the yeah. future. And, and now you're not even seeing them, really. They're not in the classrooms. Look, um, 
I, um, I cried when my father died and I cried last Saturday morning. Um, you know? I didn't mean to do this. I'm no, sorry. Um, that's totally uh, fine. You know. Why, yeah. why has it been so hard for you? Oh, look, it's been... It's actually been... It's been fantastic. It's just been exhausting. Nino Zoccali's restaurants were his lifeblood and his passion. But now it's simply about staying afloat. So he's selling all the restaurant's wine in an updated online store. And his famous pasta is now being transformed into a grocery item. So basically, overnight, you've had to change your whole business model. Completely, and it's just survival at the moment. As a former Prime Minister, Julia Gillard has some understanding of what makes Australians tick. And so even in these uncertain times, she has faith we will overcome this virus battle. If you were to sit down and address the nation, advise them on dealing with depression and anxiety, what would you say? Well, my days of formally addressing the nation are over. Uh, <laughs> that baton's been uh, passed along. Uh, but if I was going to try and put it in a couple of sentences, I would say, we'll get through this, we'll get through it together, we'll get through it by working together to save lives. This is temporary, there will be the other side. But right now, let's just do what we're being asked to do, keep people safe. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.